spring's come. We've had some good rain this winter, but we still don't know what the effects of last year's drought may have on the trees. They look pretty good right now, but there may be things going on internally that we're not aware of. The trees were very stressed last year with the lack of water and the high temperatures. So their reserves, their stores of energy in the roots may have been depleted. Unfortunately, one of the worst things we have to face right now is an invader that attacks the trees because they are low on the reserves, and that's insects. There are a lot of boring insects that may be working on our trees right now that we don't even see the effects of. So there's not much we can do but react to those things when we see them. What we can do, though, is to be proactive about a threat that may be coming to Texas, and that's the emerald ash borer. We're installing uh, what we call purple sticky traps. They're uh, for the emerald ash borer, and I want to emphasize we have not detected this insect in Texas yet, but was first uh, actually identified in about 2002 in the Michigan, in the Detroit area. The purple sticky traps that we're using uh, the insect apparently is attracted to the purple color and also we install a uh, bait on the inside, a lure, a sort of a pheromone to attract the adults. We're going to be putting out about 50 of these traps in Collin County and about 220 of them within 10 counties in North Texas. Uh, this is just part of the larger um, Texas portion of the, of the traps. We'll be putting out about 1,700 of them throughout Texas. In the past, they've concentrated on areas up in the upper Midwest in that area where they were detecting the insect, but this year they decided to move more of the traps, the survey traps, to the fringe areas or possible fringe areas. You know, there's no need to put out a bunch of traps in an area where you know the the pest is there and there's a problem. We're using a, a GPS to mark the locations and once we enter the data into the USDA database, they'll be able to plot exactly where all the traps are uh, throughout the US. If any insects are detected, this will help the USDA define more precisely where they are and be able to put out quarantines and uh, warnings to surrounding areas. We intend to come back and check these traps about every 30 to 45 days and uh, retrieve them probably the middle to the end of August. If we do find anything that looks suspicious on them, we will take it off the trap and send it to be identified correctly uh, up at, with the USDA in Michigan. Well, as a resident, you may be asking, what can I do to help? The best thing you can do is to, if you spot a trap, is just simply leave it undisturbed. If you do spot one that's on the ground, if you'll call me or, let, or send me an email at the city to let me know that it's down, we can get it back up and continue on with the study. What can you do in your own yard? The best thing you can do is be proactive. Keep mulch away from the trunk of your tree at the base. You want it about six inches away from the trunk or more. Uh, if you have it right against the trunk, what you've done is create a wonderful environment for insects to invade from. Also, limit your pruning at this time. Remember, your trees are still stressed from the drought of last year. They're trying to build up those reserves. If you're out in the park or at your home, if you spot something really unusual going on with one of your trees and you would like to know what it might be, I'm more than happy to come out and take a look at it. Just give me a call.